Hi there, I am Dr. Bree. My name is Brianne Grogan. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I am passionate about pelvic health and particularly the mind body pelvic floor connection. And today I want to talk about pelvic floor muscle spasms. What do they feel like? Why are they there? And what can we do about them? So exercises and tips to help. So if this sounds like something you need, definitely keep watching. And while you're at it, why don't you just hit the like and the subscribe to my channel if you want more pelvic health information from a holistic approach. So first of all, pelvic floor muscle spasms. Basically, a muscle spasm is when your muscle tightens up. And what does it feel like? What does a pelvic floor muscle spasm feel like? So it can feel like a band of tight muscles, like a, a band of tension. It can also feel shooting, stabbing, sharp. It can also feel, and this is my personal experience with pelvic floor muscle spasm, is it can feel like a knot of tension if the spasm goes on for a long, long time. It can feel like a knot of tension that builds up for a lot of people, and in my personal experience, it can build up in the perineum, that area between your vagina and your anus for women, and for men, the area between your testicles and your anus. So that area there, it can build up like a knot of tension that feels like a golf ball in your perineum. So those are just a few descriptors of what it feels like, but let me show you briefly, very briefly, the muscles of the pelvic floor. So this is a male pelvic floor. This is looking down into the pelvic floor and it shows you all of the muscles from the inside. So looking down into the pelvic floor. Look at, we've got a lot going on in there. So you may feel a spasm, an area of severe muscle tension and tightness that can come out of nowhere sometimes, anywhere in here. From the outside, these are the pelvic floor muscles as well. So you can feel those bands of muscle tension or spasm in these areas too. This is the perineum that I was just speaking of. All right, for a female, let's go ahead and look at a female from the inside. It looks very similar. Um, notice how close the hip rotators, this is the obturator internus, the hip rotators are super close to the pelvic floor muscles themselves. So you can see how everything is super close together. And often when we have spasms in the pelvic floor, it can move and, and impact the hips as well. So from the outside, our pelvic floor muscles are shown here. Right here is the perineum, okay? So bands of tension, shooting, stabbing, or a knot of tension like a golf ball in your perineum. That's what I felt. So let's move on into what to do about these spasms. So the first thing you can do is, first of all, breathe. And I know that's hard to do when you're in severe pain. It's hard to breathe and take a, take a deep breath. But what I want you to do is feel as if you are breathing into your genitals. So feel as if you are breathing into your vulva for females or for men. Feel like you're breathing into your testicles. Feel like you're breathing into your perineum and softening that area as you breathe. The other thing you can do is gently massage that the perineum. So the reason I keep going on about the perineum is, again, this area here for females between the vagina and the anus and for males between the testicles and the anus, this area is an, a place where all the layers of pelvic floor muscles and, and fascia, it's like it all comes together right there. So often this is a access point where you can really access the muscles, the fascia, all of these different muscles that combine to create the pelvic floor, they all basically intersect at the perineum. So massaging gently the perineum can be really helpful and just be gentle. You don't have to like really go in fast and hard to that perineum, to that outer area. You don't have to be hard. In fact, if you're super hard with your massage, that often will make the muscles react even more. And so sometimes the softest touch can be so, so soothing. Another thing that can be helpful is actually using a vibrator. So if you have a vibrator, this is just an example of a vibrator. If you happen to have a vibrator, you can use this vibrator at the perineum 
on low. So not super, super fast, but on the lowest speed, use a vibrator on the perineum and that can really help to relax the muscles and all the layers of muscles and tissues at that at that level. So I'm not talking about using the vibrator inside the anus or inside the vagina, but just on the perineum. An external vibration can really help. All right, let's talk next about exercises that can help. So you can do these exercises at the height of a muscle spasm, and you can also do them regularly to kind of preemptively counteract spasms. It's almost like you're preparing by treating yourself in advance. If you know that you tend to have spasms in your pelvic floor, you can do these stretches on a regular basis to calm your body and mind and hopefully to prevent the spasms from happening. And by the way, Go see a pelvic floor physical therapist in person if you can. If you have spasms regularly, you need to get to the root of why they're happening. It could be something to do with your posture, your alignment, your lifestyle, um, etc. So go see someone. But in the meantime, you can do these stretches proactively to hopefully prevent muscle spasms, or you can do them while you're having an actual spasm. So let me show you the stretches and then I'm going to wrap up by sharing some additional warning signs or symptoms of people with muscle spasm. So first let's get to the stretches. I'm going to show them to you while I talk you through them. The first stretch that I love is what I call the three minute miracle stretch. So this one, you are going to want to grab a pillow or a yoga block. And if you're using a pillow, make sure it's a pretty firm, small pillow, but something that doesn't have a whole lot of give, just something you can prop your hips up on. And you are going to lie on that pillow, putting the back of your pelvis on the pillow. So you're putting the sacrum, which is the very back of your pelvis, not your lumbar area, not your low back, but actually the back of your pelvis goes on the yoga block or the pillow. And you are just resting on this support surface with your hips up and you can either be in kind of a froggy stretch or a happy baby stretch. You can do whatever you want. It's also really nice to move your hips around by swirling your legs around like they're two stirring sticks. That really relaxes and releases and moves the hip muscles, the hip rotators, and it moves the hip in the socket. So that's a really nice thing to do as well. Basically, you want to rest with your hips up on the yoga block for about three minutes, either moving your legs in circles or just resting in a froggy stretch or happy baby stretch. The next pose you can do is a V stretch. So essentially you are straddling your legs apart and you're using gravity to kind of pull your legs apart from one another. And ultimately you can do this still up on the yoga block or the pillow like we just talked about for the three minute miracle stretch. It's a nice way to have your hips up. It just decompresses the pelvic floor muscles. It kind of repositions the pelvic organs if you have any type of prolapse or anything like that. And it just feels good on the low back. It often decompresses the lumbar spine. If you don't like the way it feels to be on a block, you can absolutely do this V stretch up on the wall. So you can put your legs up against the wall and let your legs drop apart while you're at the wall. Another stretch that's so great for relieving tension and really just opening the hips, opening the pelvic area is a deep squat. And I love to do a deep squat lying down on my back with my feet up on a wall. So this is really great, especially for anyone who has a hard time getting down into a deep squat on the ground. So doing a deep squat at the wall, it's as if you are deeply squatting it's just that you're lying down and your feet are on the wall. Breathe deeply in this position. Feel like you're breathing into your genitals. Feel like you're breathing and blossoming open your pelvic muscles. Just really relax, feeling the muscles melting, softening, opening. It's a really, really nice pose. Now the last pose I wanna show you is a pose that uses a ball, a little small inflatable exercise ball, sometimes called a Pilates ball. And you can do different variations of this. You can do a deep, deep squat with rotations where you're squatting actually on the ball. So the ball is massaging your perineum. 
and you can play around with height. If it's too much for you to get down into a deep squat or it doesn't feel safe for you to get down into a deep squat, then you can also do this on a support service that's higher up. So for example, I'm showing here on a little, like a little tuffet you can sit upon and I put the ball on top of the tuffet and then I'm sitting on the ball. Or you can play around with other positions, but the idea is you're using the ball, the inflatable ball that's only really partially inflated. It doesn't have to be fully, fully inflated. And you are squatting and rotating a little bit to really get that massage from the ball and really feel the hips opening, the pelvic floor muscles relaxing, and of course you're breathing throughout. All right, so hopefully those exercises will be really helpful for you. And just to wrap this up, I wanna share some signs and symptoms of pelvic floor muscle spasms. So check this out. If you have any of the following, then this may be something that you are dealing with, is pelvic floor muscle spasms and the exercises that I just showed will be really helpful for you to proactively help prevent these pelvic floor muscle spasms from continuing or from getting worse. And you can also use the exercises when you're actually having a more active spasm. But remember, go see a physical therapist in your local area if you have access to one, somebody you can see in person for individual support. All right, here's the signs of, or the symptoms of pelvic floor muscle spasm. Some of them you might not really associate with pelvic floor muscle spasm. So the first one is ongoing pain or discomfort in the pelvic region that can even spread to the low back and the abdomen. You might have pain during urination. Sometimes it can feel like a burning sensation. You might have frequent urination. You might have difficulty urinating or starting the stream of urine. And you might have constipation or difficulty uh, actually passing stool during your bowel movements. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any of those symptoms of pelvic floor muscle spasms, those are also symptoms of pelvic floor hypertonicity, then I hope you'll try the stretches that I shared with you. And remember, don't be afraid to touch your perineum, to gently massage your perineum, and to breathe deeply into your pelvic floor muscles. And if you want additional support and help, I do have an entire program dedicated to pelvic floor tension and pain. It's called Overcome. And this is a program that is designed for women. So if you are a male watching this and you want more support, I have a whole playlist for pelvic pain and tension for men. So I'll put the link to my Overcome program for women in the video description, and I'll also put a link to the playlist for men in my video description as well. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.